uh, when we see uh, the Bible lands, there's some things that we, you know, re recall because you've read it in your Bible, and you say, oh, I, I want to see that. When I was 12 years old, we went to a little country church out north of Kansas City, and it was out in the sticks, and, you know, where we lived, we didn't have uh, running water unless we'd run real fast out and drop the bucket down and get it in. And we, so in the wintertime, we had running water. You know? And uh, we didn't have a telephone, and uh, so we didn't have a telegraph, but we would tell a woman it would get everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've just lost most of my audience here, I think. <laughs> but we had a retired mortician who came to our little church, and he had uh, spent two months taking a ship over to Haifa and then back and saw a few sites. He got down to Jerusalem and he got over to uh, Tiberias and the Sea of Galilee and he got to Bethlehem. Well, he put those on a little eight millimeter projector and he came to our church and showed them and I just dreamed, oh, maybe sometime I would have the privilege of seeing those places where the Lord Jesus served, where the prophets proclaimed the word of God, where the apostles ministered, and, but I thought I never would. I was 35 years old before I got to go, and I was pastoring South Fort Worth Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas, and I, I got to go, my wife got to go, and we thought that would be the only time we'd go. Well, on the trip, our, our guide, his name was Sari of Rabadi. Sari, I said he was a Sari guide, but it, it, we had a wonderful time. But we didn't have the amenities of today and the nice buses, and we didn't have a lot of things, but we had a wonderful trip. And uh, so we, we went right by a lot of things. So Sorry would just take us to some basic sites, which were great, and then explain a few things. And I said, well, I, I would like to have more to say about what we see. So I started saying more about it when I went back, thinking, you know, I never would go back, but I did. And now 90 times and every time has been a great blessing. And sometimes people wonder about the safety. Well, actually, we've never had any problem. And we've been there when they were in war, but we stay away from the hot spots and people don't know they've missed anything. It's like in Kansas City or Lincoln or any other big city. There are places where people with drug problems will hang out and they'll shoot each other and so on. And uh, people say, well, Aren't you afraid to go over there? I said, no, I'm afraid more to go in South Kansas City than I am over there, <laughs> you know, because uh, they have killings every night in South Kansas City. And it's a shame, but it, that's true. They don't have as many killings over there as they do in one of our big cities. But anyway, uh, we do watch out for people's safety. And I'm up at the front of the bus, so I uh, watch very carefully because if we had any problems, I would be the first to arrive at the scene of the accident. You know? And uh, I tell everybody I'm allergic to pain. <laughs> so we stay away from that. And uh, people aren't there but a short time until all their fears are gone. Their fears are before they go. And then they have a wonderful trip and uh, they meet up with some other Christians and, and they're able to be a witness to people of the land that are not Christians. And so it's a, kind of a missionary trip in that way. Uh, I have some friends in Jericho that weren't Christians. I knew them for years. And this one fellow is now a Christian and uh, he uh, has a hard time with the situation around him, but he is a witness for the Lord. And there are others like that. One fellow that he was just a kid in Jerusalem and uh, not a Christian, but one fellow stopped him and talked to him about the Lord and to make a long story short, he accepted the Lord as his personal savior. Then later he came to the States and he was one of my students. And now he's back over there and started several churches and doing a wonderful work. So uh, why would a person want to go? Let's uh, look at just a few things on the slide here. Uh, what is the value? Well, let's see, how do we change that slide? Is it right here? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, 
But hey, you know what? I, I could push I don't these know buttons. What to do if you push that? That's not a remote. Oh, this is not it. Yeah, I think I can get you here. Right there, oh, you go. Okay, it? now you go ahead and eat, and, and I'll. Carl's bringing my food. In oh, okay. All right. Uh, so my personal. <laughs> 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 my personal experience, it, it was a dream that came true. Uh, in evangelism, it opens the door to witnesses. In education, it helps to teach the Bible. In apologetics, it shows the reality of the places, people, and events. Uh, and then visually, it makes the written word come to life. We'll take the next one. And uh, how do we prepare to go? Well, you, you'll have a brochure that you read thoroughly. Uh, Consider a date that is uh, appropriate for a group and uh, the itinerary uh, sometimes a church group that uh, establishes a, a trip uh, we, we start out with one church as a nucleus and then they can invite others and other churches until we fill up a bus That's the way we do it and uh, The conditions and the terms have to be read and signed that you agree to them and on the back there are the tour uh, conditions and policies and so on. And uh, so you know what it's all about. Then you fill out a reservation form and you send in a deposit. And if you have a passport, we need to have the copy of the picture page of your passport for visas, entries, even to get uh, the international uh, flight tickets, which are e-tickets so that you know, you just have a, 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 a little piece of paper that shows you've paid for it, but even if you lost that, uh, it's on the computerized uh, programming. So I, I like that because uh, people sometimes have misplaced their ticket at a hard time, and, you know, and we used to have to have that paper ticket. Now we don't. But you have to have an ID, and the passport is the ID. ID. Uh, then you send that uh, to us, and... Uh, if you don't have one, you write on the reservation form pending, you can go ahead and reserve your spot, uh, but you would put where we ask for information on the passport, uh, you put it, it's pending and you, you sign up for it. Sometimes it takes six weeks, so uh, if you want to do that right away. And then for adults, it's, uh, it lasts for 10 years, the passport does. Then uh, you secure a roommate, or if you like a single supplement, uh, be single, then you'd have to pay a single supplement, which is extra. Uh, three people can go for the same price, uh, but if one person has a private room, they pay $75 per night extra. So it, it is quite a, quite a bit more. So you really do like to have friends that you can visit with. And, and if you don't have a roommate, a lot of times there's someone coming maybe from another church and they need a roommate and we put the roommates together. Um, then You'll receive an invoice and you'll have deadline dates on that. Then you'll also receive information along the way. Uh, for instance, uh, the rooming list, and then we'll give the uh, contact information. Uh, if people who are back home want to contact you, how do they reach you over there? What are the hotels like? And now you can look up online and get a view of the hotels where used to we couldn't do that, but you can do that now. We have beautiful hotels excellent deluxe uh, facilities. Uh, you have a, a, a buffet, breakfast of all kinds of foods, as much as you want. And then the evening meals also back at the hotel is a, a buffet, all kinds of food, as much as you want. Then during the day, we'll stop somewhere along the trip if you would like to get something light, like a sandwich, what they call a falafel, People say, well, what's a falafel? Well, that's what you eat in your falafel. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> uh, not really. It's, it's some of their fast food that's very good. And a, uh, a shawarma, a, uh, wh what the Greeks call a gyro, gyro, is what the Arabs and Jewish people call a shawarma. And then you have a schnitzel, which is a German word, of course, and that's a, a slice of uh, turkey breast, and it is... Uh, French fried and put in pita bread and along with lettuce and cabbage and tomatoes and, and they line it with sesame seed uh, uh, oil and uh, kind of a substitute for uh, mayonnaise, you know, or uh, Miracle Whip. And, uh, you know, we, we think that a sandwich just isn't a sandwich without Miracle Whip, you know. <laughs> it says Sylvester the cat. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, we, we have uh, food, and it, it's all supplied in the price except for the lunch time, and that is uh, whatever you want, bowl of soup or something, or you can take peanut butter and crackers because you're going to have these big meals at the beginning of the day and when we get back after visiting. And so you really don't need much, if anything, but a lot of times people will say, well, I want a sandwich. Okay, you will stop there. Uh, then we will uh, usually have, now uh, we've had a lot of international ports before, but most often in the last number of years, we've used Chicago. That works best for people in the middle, middle west. We've, we've used Atlanta, we've used Detroit, we've used New York a number of times. Uh, but it, it works best for us to go in and out of Chicago. And the tour begins with Chicago, ends with Chicago. So you have to have a, a domestic flight or a group often takes a bus. You know, it's not that many hours from here to Chicago, <coughs> excuse me, on a touring bus. And uh, uh, trains go there. Uh, so there are a lot of ways to get there. But the tour starts at Chicago. We used to buy group rates for people from different domestic ports. And we found that actually they could get a better price as an individual through these uh, uh, agencies like Orbit, Travelog, uh, and, and different ones than we could get as a group. So we said, okay, you, you get there on your own. We'll tell you when you need to be there. We'll also tell you when we get back, how long it's, uh, you need to have between arrival, getting your baggage going through customs, and uh, catching the flight home, how, how long that takes. And we put that all in uh, information sheets along the way. Also, it, we will uh, give you a packing hints sheet, how to pack, what to take. And uh, we, we always say, uh, pack light. Uh, I, I just had a call uh, yesterday morning, uh, it was yesterday morning, from someone going on this next trip, and, and they said, uh, I want to take something electrical. And I said, well, then you need a little transformer, because often their current is DC, and we use AC. And uh, in these real nice hotels where we're going to be, sometimes I'll have a little switch, but I don't trust that just to get you a little transformer. It doesn't cost much. And, and then the different plugs, different size plugs. And uh, I tell people on the trip, if you plug in something electrical, and it works better than it ever has before in your life. Then unplug it. It's going to burn up real quick. <laughs> so uh, uh, every one of the rooms in our hotels will have a hair dryer, but it's a blow type. So if you want a, a curler type, uh, like Pastor might need, to, then you, you, you need to have this electrical uh, uh, transformer. Uh, and, and people have uh, telephones, and, and you can and buy a one month thing that says you can call from over there back home. Uh, you also can get on free Wi-Fi. And if you have, say, an iPad, you can take pictures with that, take great pictures. But also you can, uh, and video, uh, you can get on things like Skype and on Wi-Fi. And you can talk to someone back here at home and see each other. And well, we used to couldn't do that, you know. So that really makes it a nice handy thing. Uh, but anyway, so we, we leave by a jumbo jet, uh, sometimes 747, sometimes 777, sometimes 760, those are Boeing, but sometimes the Airbus, like the Airbus 340 or others, they're all very nice. Uh, we've been going uh, the last uh, several years now, uh, even though we've gone El Al, uh, the old TWA, American Airlines, which took over TWA, um, used a lot of times the Olympic Airways. Uh, Scandinavian Air Service, uh, uh, Lufthansa, m many other airlines. But we've been using uh, the uh, National Airline of Jordan, Royal Jordanian, and uh, no terrorists has ever attacked them. They're kind of in the neutral zone there. And so, it, we, you know, we feel pretty safe. Uh, now, El Al watches very carefully, but, but they're always aimed at, you know. Uh, people are trying to shoot them down. And one of the things they do to uh, get the timing of the terrorist off is they never leave on time. <laughs> never. And, and so 
uh, you may wait an hour or two hours. Well, that is a little uncomfortable, and, but it does knock off the timing if somebody wanted to disrupt the flight. And so uh, uh, while we think it's a great airline, we, we have not used that. We've gone often into Tel Aviv, the Ben Gurion International, but we've been going into Alia, A-L-I-A. I tell everybody that A-L-I-A stands for always late in arrival, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's the uh, uh, airport that's the international airport of the Jordan. So anyway, there's a kind of a bus transportation we have, there's planes. Uh, everybody has a speaker over their head in the bus and we have microphones over the front. So we'll talk about where we're going. We'll talk about what you're seeing while we're going and uh, give a lot of explanation before we ever get there. Then we got off and we go through the site. You see it, we explain it, we relate the history of it. We talk uh, sometimes about the geological circumstances of it. We talk about uh, the political history of it, the people who live there, and the evidence of these things that the Bible describes. Uh, we call that apologetic evidence. And uh, it just makes a wonderful experience. Uh, so the, the cost that will be on the brochure will be from Chicago back to Chicago. It will include uh, meet and assist transfer to the hotel and there's lectures on the way. And then it will include the hotels, there's several. It will include uh, all of the entry fees to museums, archeological sites and the like. It will include a boat ride over Galilee, a cable car at the top of Masada. It'll have a lot of extras that many times are not included. It will be a full day of touring. And if a person just doesn't want to tour on a day or so, uh, they, all they have to do is tell us that they're not going. That very seldom happens. When it has happened, and the people come back and tell them where they've been, they say, oh, wish we hadn't have stayed around the hotel, I wish we'd have gone with them. But we give you perfect liberty. It's your trip, it's your freedom to do as you like. But we're going to go every day, full day, not just half day, and we're not going to take the bus away from you one day, as is the custom. Uh, we go every day because you didn't go over there to laze around a hotel. You could do that over here. Uh, you went over there to see the sites and to hear about the sites. And uh, it's, it's a Bible study tour. And uh, we keep up the pace, but we watch after the people to see if anyone needs special care. And uh, the hospitals are uh, real good and uh, medication is available. But if you take medication, we say that uh, you should uh, take it with you but watch how you can uh, take it aboard the airplane. Some things you cannot take aboard. You can put it in your uh, checked through suitcase, but some things, if you try to take it aboard, they'll take it away from you. Uh, we can get medicines over there and uh, have good pharmacies, uh, good doctors, good hospitals, and a few times in 90 times with uh, you know, an average of 35, 40 people each time, uh, we've had to take someone to a hospital and we found that, you know, possible. Uh, here's an example. One time we were at Caesarea Philippi, which, uh, not Caesarea Philippi, Caesarea Maritima, which was on the scene by the seashore a while ago, and uh, a lady tripped and fell right into the corner of one of those great big uh, Corinthian capitals of the time of Herod the Great. And, you know, that edge just hair lipped her. It cut her lip right to the bone. And so, I took her to a hospital at Afula, and, and I knew some of the techniques that they needed to keep it from leaving uh, marks. So I asked the physician what type of method he would use, and I liked that. And back then, they would use a, a different type of stitch, and uh, also they would put, they would pull it out early and then put a collodium on there. And uh, one month after we got back, you could just barely see a little red line. Three months after we got back, we saw that lady, and unless you knew that she had fallen in a hair lift or something, you couldn't even tell it. Now, you, you know what the doctor charged me for that? You'll never guess. $50 wow. for suturing up that. Anymore, they give it to you, because you know everything else is a do-it-yourself type of thing. And they say, suit yourself. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but uh, and then we had one fellow break a, a leg, and I, I paid $300 on that, but he had insurance, and they, they gave it back to me. 
Uh, but for the most part, we've not had any problems. People have not uh, been hurt or minor illnesses only, and uh, we're able to take care of that. So, but anyway, medical detention is available. Uh, sometimes people have to have uh, oxygen. Well, you can't take oxygen on a plane, but the plane, if you notify them, can bring you oxygen on board, and then you can get oxygen waiting for you overseas. Most people don't need that, but if you do, it's available. Um, they have uh, uh, wheelchair assistance in some places. Uh, all of the hotels uh, have that, of course. Um, but uh, in some places, you'd have to just stay on a bus because it's hard to, on a wheelchair to go some of those places. One of them would be down in Petra, you know. Uh, that would be a little hard, unless you got the chariot like some of them got. You saw that, the chariot, as we call it. And um, uh, okay, so uh, all of those things are included in the trip. And you want to take cameras and take pictures, and of course, with the digital, you can take it so much better than where we used to have all these rolls of film, you know, and then you bring them back and have them. Uh, you can tell right off if you've got a good picture with the digital. And, and I really like that. That's, that's great. Uh, you want to have your Bible. You want to have some notepads and take down notes as we go along. Uh, we also have uh, what we call a tour guide is available. A person wants it that, where we've written out a lot of things. Um, now, one of the things you want to know is how much does it cost? Well, each trip is a little bit different. But as I heard you talking, I, I think probably next March would be uh, ideal for you. May. Or May. Okay, May. May's just a little bit higher, but um, about $2,800 base price. Then they're going to charge a um, tipping pool fee of about 70 and then there's going to be a um, board, we cross international borders twice. The combined total of that is about uh, 70 to $75. The uh, visa into Jordan is $20. It doesn't cost anything for a visa into Israel for an American uh, passport carrier. Um, okay, uh, that's $20 into, into Jordan and you get a double a double entry because we leave and come back. And so they will stamp that a double entry. What am I missing here? Oh, yes. Uh, they've given us in recent years, uh, the airlines have given what we call a surcharge for fuel. And they've put that together with the security fees and tax. Well, I can remember when we didn't have to pay any security fees and tax. Then I can remember when it was seven. Then it went up to thirteen dollars, and and then now it, it's up to five hundred dollars. So you'll be paying about thirty-five hundred dollars, but our, our trips are a thousand dollars or more less than the going rate, and we see more. But it is a costly thing, so you got to be thinking about thirty-five dollars a person. Uh, thirty-five hundred dollars <laughs> a person. Uh, yes, from Chicago back to Chicago. Oh, well, $3,500 I was including on getting to Chicago and back on some of the trips. And some of the trips, it cost $3,500 from Chicago back to Chicago. The, the what? How many days, she asked? Oh, how many days? Uh, those two trips are 11 days. The trip here in December, January uh, is uh, 14 days. And uh, so... I like to go at least 11, and then it's nice to go just a few more. I can show you a lot more things. But we try to get uh, a lot done even in 11 days. What's the time difference? The what? What's the time difference? Uh, eight hours. Eight hours ahead? Yes. Uh -huh. So, for instance, um, if we leave here from Chicago at about 9.30 in the evening, we get over there about 5.30 p.m. and you've lost a day. But coming back, we arrive back the same day we left. Because, <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's, it's like the time change here. One time a person was boarding a flight in New York and he said, when does it leave? Okay, they told him. And then it was going into Los Angeles and when does it arrive? And they told him it was only five minutes. 
Oh, he said, I don't think I want to get aboard that plane. <laughs> he, he said, but tell me where to look when he takes off. I want to see him take off. <laughs> but it was a time difference, see. So, uh, for instance, over there, we might leave the airport at around 10.30 a.m., and we get back here around 4.30 p.m. You know, just... Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, it, if it went into Tel Aviv, it would be at Tel Aviv. Uh, they don't fly us into Haifa. But this is a flight even farther. This goes into Amman, Jordan, and we go by bus across the Jordan into Israel and change buses. And then we go from Dan to Beersheba, from the Mediterranean to the Jordan, and then we go from the Yarmuk in the north, that's the northern border of uh, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, and uh, going down to and including uh, Petra. As so, uh, and, oh, and from the desert on over to uh, the Jordan. Uh, and some of the places you'll see in, uh, and I'll come to this question, some of the places you'll see in Jordan will include uh, Mount Nebo, where Moses, uh, Madaba, where they had war, Heshbon, where Sihon, the king of the Amorites, lived, uh, and down to Petra, of course, and past the site where John the Baptist was imprisoned at Makawar, or Makaris as we call it, and then on up north to the Jabbok River where J uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and then on to uh, Jerash, one of the great uh, Decapolis cities, and on to Amkase, a Decapolis city, uh, often into a crusader fortress uh, built by Izzi Adin in the time of the uh, 12th century, 1100s AD, uh, that is at Ajlun, and overlooking the valley where Absalom's hair was caught in the thicket of the tree and so on. Anyway, we see all those sites. Then over in Israel, I mean, I, I, I would just be talking for a long time telling you, but all around Jerusalem, uh, Bethlehem, Jericho, um, down to uh, Lachish and Maresha and the Bajorine Caverns and the Philistine Plains and and then on uh, north of uh, Caesarea Maritima, uh, up to uh, Samaria called Sebast by Herod the Great, and Jacob's Well at Nablus, uh, Shechem, Sychar area, and then on to Mount Carmel and the Maraca where uh, Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal, down to Megiddo, famous battlefield, uh, before Armageddon is right before that, named after Megiddo, Har Megadon means the hill of Megiddo, and the, the Greeks drop the huh, aspirate sound, and it comes out Armageddon, Har Megadon, though. And then uh, to uh, Beit Sha'arim, where the uh, Sanhedrin fled after Hadrian's uh, put down of the Bar Kokhba revolt. And that's a catacomb of tombs. It's a great sight to see. Uh, on over to Akko, Acre, Ptolemus, uh, those places. Uh, Nazareth, and uh, we stay up on a high hill at Nazareth and uh, look down one side to Old City Nazareth, look down the other side to the Israel and Jezreel Valley, uh, Mount Tabor, uh, you know, those mountains, and uh, Sea of Galilee, boat ride there. Um, Capernaum, Bethsaida, Chorazin, Hazor, Hazor, and uh, we point out the territories, the territorial grants, what were the borders of the 12 tribal grants. And, where did the Levite, the Levitical cities and the cities of refuge, where were they? We point those out, go right by them, sometimes visit them. Uh, then uh, Tel Dan, which was on the depiction here, and the headwaters of the Jordan at the Ayun and the Khashpani and the Eldanim and at the Banyas, Caesarea and Maritima and Caesarea Philippi up there. And then we go up the slopes of Mount Hermon uh, we see the Nimrod Fortress, and we go right to the edge of the current uh, border of Syria and Israel, and we stop, and you can look across and see Damascus in the distance. Last time we were there uh, was in uh, June, and when we looked across, we saw them blowing up things and all the smoke way over there, but we were 40 miles away, safely away. And uh, so you see a lot. Um, so you relate to the Old Testament territorial grants and the cities of refuge. But then we also show the border lines and the divisions for the New Testament uh, political divisions, which are different. And uh, one of the great sites is Sephoris, which has some of the best uh, mosaics and pictures of the ancient world in history. Uh, that, that was by Gabinius of the Romans uh, it, it was made into the capital city of the, the new territory of Galilee. 
And so Herod Antipas, he first started reigning from there, then moved down to Tiberias. But uh, a lot of things you see. Now, some questions, so I don't just do all the talking here. Yes. Oh, I didn't show the, any of the slides. But let me answer this, and then, then we'll real quickly show these slides. Yes. It sounds like the weather could be just about anything. What's the mm -hmm. comparable mm -hmm. attitude? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. The comparable latitude gives you a good attitude because it's with Florida. And the only reason that they have any cold weather or snow is if a, a front comes through, which is rare, and if you're up in the mountains. Well, in Jerusalem, we're in the mountains. And you're in the mountains going to Petra. And so we've even seen snow. But it's not all that. That explains the bananas. Uh, that explains what? That explains the bananas. Oh, oh, yes, right. The, the, the tropical and semi-tropical area for bonanzas, oh, they grow all kinds of fruit and vegetables and uh, nut meats, you know, uh, pistachios, uh, pecans, uh, all, all kinds, uh, uh, almonds, and uh, then, you know, like you said, bananas and oranges and pomelos and grapefruit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an, and all year long. Because the growing season varies depending on uh, where they are. At Jericho, you have the best tasting fruit in all the world. Well, we stop there, and everybody gets real fruity. Yeah. <laughs> some don't have to go very far. <laughs> okay, uh, now let's see some slides here. Uh, this is, uh, it, it's called the treasury, the El Kazna, but it never was a treasury. That was a misnomer. It uh, actually was the burial parlor for uh, Retus the Fourth who is mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 30 through 33. Uh, but they called it El Cosmo. It's a Nabataean. And when we're there, we explain uh, the Nabataean art, where the Nabataeans came from, the related to Esau's descending line. And, and you have the, the neoclassical facade here and the Corinthian capitals here. But you have a stepped gable up there with a round piece with the blind arcades and carvings in that and an urn on top. They started carving from the top. You can see where they had their scaffolding in here. And they went from the top and went down to the bottom. And that's carved out of a rock, carved right out of rock, all of that. But there's not much inside. There's three rooms inside, and they're very plain because that's where they just had a burial site for King the IV. And that's at Petra. That's at Petra, yes. Oh, yeah, all of these things. Is, oh, the body? No, no, no. no. Uh, grave robbers, no doubt, soon after they were buried, they went at night and took all the gold and other things. There, uh, up in Jerusalem, on the second hill south of the city of Jerusalem itself, there was a, uh, a cave which was a burial site, a catacomb, catacomb uh, tomb site. Uh, well, the grave robbers had gotten in and stolen everything, but one arm, as an earthquake had happened, it closed it off. And so they used the periscope camera and drilled down and put the camera and took pictures uh, to see if there's anything of value in that one arm that had been closed off. It, they didn't know how soon it was closed off. Maybe it was closed off after the grave robbers had gotten in. But sure enough, everything was there. And one of the great finds that they found in there was an ossuary. Ossuary is a bone box. It's carved out of uh, stone with a top on it. And uh, they would let the bodies lie on the kokavim or the loculus uh, for two and no more than seven years. And then when the flesh had uh, rotted off, they'd take the bones, put them together, and put them in a bone box and identify whose bones they were. And then they could use that shelf for another body of the descending line of that family. Well, one of the great finds in that place that I mentioned here, uh, where an earthquake had, had cut it off and they dug in, was the bone box of Caiaphas, the very priest who judged Jesus. That was a priestly tomb site. And uh, so people, when they went to the museum to see that, they'd want to pick up, you're not supposed to do that, not supposed to touch those lids. And they'd pick up that lid, but they didn't find anything in there because they took the bones out. So no bones about it. They're not there. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, did, did I answer your question? Okay. Um, we can go. 
Yeah, here's Cherash and some of the column streets there. All of the Roman cities had a Cardo, Main Street Cardo from Cardia Hart, and the North and South Street, and then they had Decumanus Streets, Decumani, that would intersect, and this is one of the great cities to show uh, that. They also had here uh, a very large city, but only half of it is excavated. We can show you on through the city on the other side where the walls were, and the city that's there kept them from digging under those houses, but then where they've dug is really great. And the most well-preserved and beautiful, wonderful uh, Roman forum in the world is the Oval Forum at Jerash. And so we take people through there. Different kinds of uh, columns and, and the different types of capitals. You have the fluted, big, uh, kind of a capital they call Doric. And that's like what they had at um, Athens, for instance, on the Acropolis. And then you have the uh, kind of petite with a, a flat top and a scroll on either side, and we call that ionic. And then they have the big fluted type with the acanthus leaves carved into it, and that's the Corinthian style. And that's the style that Herod the Great liked best. He, he really had a penchant for that. Uh, all right, other questions? Uh, next site, that's also at Bethsaida. And right here in the foreground, that's a great big stone, which was the stone lintel for the main entry of the city. And they call it Scythopolis because the Scythians were brought in to serve the Romans, and then they didn't want to go home. It was such a nice place. They stayed there. They called it Scythia, Scythopolis. Polis is where the city is Scytho from Scythian, so Scythopolis. And in the New Testament, it mentions Scythopolis. This is the one city on the west side of the Jordan that was one of the Decapolis cities, started by Alexander the Great, then by the Romans, and used for military and also for trade purposes. Ten cities, Decapolis. And the background, that big mound, that is the old Beth Shan. And now they call the whole city around that Beth Shan, which is the Old Testament name. It was on this site up at the top where you see that uh, little structure up there. That's a big temple, and uh, that was uh, to the female consort of Baal, uh, Start. And uh, it was on the walls of that temple that the bodies of Saul and his son Jonathan, who were slain on nearby Mount Kabul, were taken and strung up. Okay, uh, another one here quickly. Okay, this is the Belvoir Fortress in Fasse. Originally, that was called Kokov Hayardim, which means the beautiful view of the Jordan, the star of Jordan, Kokov star of the, of the Jordan. And so from there, you can look all up and down the Jordan River. You can look back at the Israel and Jezreel Valley. You can see Mount Tabor. You can see Mount Arbel. You can see uh, Nazareth and other places and Mount Gabal. It's a beautiful place. And that's how they protected traffic going up and down the Jordan Valley. And they took those old stones in the uh, 12th century, 1100s, and built it by the French crusaders. And then what's down before us is a big fosse. That's a dry moat. It's like my humor. It's dry humor. <laughs> they didn't have enough water up there to fill that moat. So they made a big ditch. And then they put lions in there. So if you ever uh, dropped in, you'd drop in for lunch, you know. <laughs> and the lions would get fed up with you. Uh, there's a lot of things to tell about that site we won't. Let's, now here on the Sea of Galilee. Are you on the sea there? Yeah. I missed the Jordan. Oh, there's the Jordan River. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, this is the river right down here. Some flowers up in the foreground. And that's real close to where your pastor uh, had baptisms when he was over there. And, uh, and now the Sea of Galilee, uh, we're in one ship, of course, we're not in that one, and we're not walking on the water here. <laughs> uh, but we, we take some bread with us and throw it up, and these birds come along and catch it right in midair, these seagulls. And uh, these seagulls, they're a beautiful bird. They're white, and then a, a black head with a bright orange-yellow beak and then they put massacre, or is it masca, mas, ma, okay, mascara. <laughs> they put massacre, mascara around their eyes. <laughs> okay, we'll go quickly. Okay, Nazareth, the Church of Saint Gabriel. Next, uh, this is Capernaum, beautiful city. Uh, where that synagogue is in the background, that's a synagogue. Uh, it was built later. 
but it was built right over the dark basalt stone type of structure that was there in Jesus' day. And the ruler of that synagogue was Jairus. Jesus healed his daughter. Okay, we'll go. Uh, here's the Megiddo Valley. And that big mountain in the background, it doesn't look big because of its shape. It, it looks like it's kind of lazing on the job, loafing on the job. It looks like a loaf. Loafing on the job. Yeah. But it is very high. You got it. Okay, good. <laughs> good. I put a little leaven in that one. Okay. Uh, and uh, Nazareth is um, up to the left, the very far left side is where Nazareth is located. Then uh, we're standing, by the way, on Megiddo. And right before us is the place where Armageddon battle will begin. Okay, here we go. Here's a Megiddo altar. Right beneath the words Megiddo altar is the largest of the pagan altars ever found in Israel. It's very large. It was once smooth, of course, and now it's only the hard rock that was underneath the plastering that they had. This is in what's called the Chicago Dig, paid for by John D. Rockefeller's money. And uh, James H. Breasted was the one that gave to the world the name the Fertile Crescent. And uh, he had people go from the U University of Chicago over there to do this dig. All right, we'll go. Here's Caesarea on the seacoast, therefore it's called Caesarea Maritima. And uh, for many years, all of this was covered, and this was a big wheat field. We could see things down there, we could see things back behind us, but we couldn't see this. And then when they excavated this, they found the governor's palace, which is, I'm standing in the governor's palace, and then they found this great big hippodrome. Hippo means horse, and it was a place where they raced horses, and where they raced people where they had wrestling matches, boxing matches, javelin throws, and other things. And uh, they had a lot of uh, athletic events. Every fifth year, they would have an athletic event, either here or in uh, Samaria's big hippodrome, because Herod the Great invited all of the governors and the, and the people of different territories around the Mediterranean to come and have this big event every fifth year. And the the person who won first in each thing got a gold medallion. Those who won second got a silver medallion. Those who got a third, a bronze medallion. Reminds us a lot of the revived Olympics of our modern day. So we'll go on beyond that. Here is in Jerusalem. Now, this is a painting on the wall. But here are some of the columns, like are there, painted, of the Cardo Street in the Byzantine Jerusalem times. And they noticed that there had to be a Cardo Street somewhere in Jerusalem because of the Madaba map in mosaic on the floor of the St. Peter's Church in Madaba. And so then when they, in the 67, Six Day War, the Jews were able to go back into the Jewish quarter and it was all in terrible ruin. And so they gave them a few years to first excavate before they would start rebuilding and they found the Cardo Street. And so this depiction shows the extension of what the Cardo would have looked like, a street of uh, the Byzantine era. Okay, next one. This is inside the Damascus Gate. Next picture is uh, down in Bethlehem, and this is a statue of Jerome who translated the Latin Vulgate in the same cave where Jesus had been born, but farther into it. And uh, uh, I like to take people down into that cave. Okay, now here's a, a great cave. In fact, there are a series of them called the bell-shaped uh, caverns of Beit Javrin. And uh, the reason this spot right here is, to me, a sacred spot, is that when the Muslim took over after the Battle of the Yarmouk in 636 AD, and by 638 AD, they took over Jerusalem, they were killing Christians. And the Christians fled, and they had their worship service in this cave, and they left the you know, markings on, on the walls. And the Muslim found them and slaughtered them there. And these people would rather die than deny. I would only hope that we might be the same. Yeah. And uh, so that's a sacred spot. Uh, it's real close to Maresha, where Micah the prophet came from. So we talk about Micah and his book in the Bible, his prophecies and so on. Uh, but the Beit Javrin Camerons, and when I'm there, I tell people how they were uh, developed and made and why they were made. Okay, we'll go on. Here's going up to Masada, cable car. Here is in, in Gedi walking way back up, and there are three different waterfalls, and this is the, uh, the second, and there's uh, one before this, third one, and um, I, I think that picture was taken of me there just uh, in May. But anyway, uh, Qumran, this is a very important uh, place. This is where they copied the scriptures 
Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, they hid them in the caves. And now we, so much more. You have to decide, and then the earliest, the best, because many wait till it's too late. So start the process, takes time. Enjoy, savor every moment. Learn, related to the Bible, share, be a channel of blessing. Do I have another slide? That might be no, it. That's it. Okay, any other questions? When's the best time to go? Uh, well, th there are different best times. Uh, the best time for weather, in my estimate, is in October. However, you'll have great weather at any time of the year. The reason more people go December, January, the end of the time, is they can get off work. And, and farming, you know, at that time, you, you're not farming in the snow over here. And uh, people can get off work. It's after Christmas, so people enjoy Christmas with their families. And they get over there. But once in a while, we'll have some cool days. So I tell them, take a jacket. And, uh, but it didn't, didn't last. We'll still have to have the air conditioning on in the bus uh, on a lot of the trip, and especially when we go down to the Dead Sea or go over to Tiberias, because uh, Tiberias is 700 feet below sea level, and down at the Dead Sea, it's the lowest spot on Earth. You really get that low down feeling there. It's 1,300 feet below sea level, and actually, it's lower than that because it keeps going down. I've seen it go down 200 feet, but they still tell us to give the figure of 1,300. It's really 1,500 feet. And then the Arabah Valley that's at the south going through uh, the Vale of Sidim and on to the Red Sea at Aqaba and also Eilat, uh, you have to go uphill all the way from the Dead Sea to get there because that's sea level, but the Dead Sea is 1,300 to 1,500 feet below sea level. And so it's like some of my students, I tell them, in my classes, I said, you need some scuba diving gear. And they say, why? I said, because you've gone below sea level. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes? Why did they build uh, churches, etc., cetera, over mm -hmm. uh, holy sites? Yeah. Uh, well, in 325 AD, Queen Helena became a Christian, and the Romans had been persecuting Christians. She got her son, who had become now the uh, emperor to uh, stop, you know, in, in 313 AD, uh, Galerius and also Constantine met at Milan, they call it Milan, no, Italy in the Po Valley, and uh, they decided no longer to persecute Christians. And uh, so Queen Helena says, okay, you're not persecuting, why don't you let us commemorate? And so she got them talked into sending her over and finding with guides. Uh, important places and building a church to commemorate it. Well, uh, to us, we'd like to see it in situ or like it was. And many of these places, yes, we see it like it was. But in some cases, it's probably true they preserved the site by building a church over it. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, I would like to see it without a church over it. We'd like to see churches there, but we'd like to see gospel preaching churches, and we'd like to see uh, the money and not spent for a monument, but uh, spent to house a true a Christian group. And, and so we have to put up with that. Uh, the Dome of the Rock, you go to that? Uh-huh. The, uh, the Dome of the Rock, uh, Haram al-Sharif, uh, here lately they've been keeping us from up there, but we look across from uh, just up above and look to it. And that's where the temple once stood. And when I can get up there, I can show people what's called the asymmetrical stone of Solomon that helps us to know exactly where the temple had to be placed. And, uh, uh, but that's uh, a Muslim mosque. It was uh, Omar was the caliph when they started that in 725 AD. And then his son was under the administration that finished it. It's been rebuilt, restructured many times. But uh, that was, when it was built, uh, considered the second most uh, holy site of the Muslim besides, you know, Mecca. And uh, now it's the third. But, uh, yeah, that's what's there. Uh, well, we uh, have to stop at 48 on a bus. Now, I have another church that's going along with us in December. And uh, so we've uh, overpopulated the one bus. So I told him, okay, you go on your bus, I'll get you a good guide, but we're not going to go to the same sites at the same time so that everybody gets to see up close uh, what's happened there. So that's the way we work it now is as if we have two different groups, but we go on the same flight, we stay in the same hotels, 
We have the same food morning and evening, and we'll visit the same sites, but not at the same time. And uh, so I've got uh, uh, 65 going here in December. Well, we only have uh, 25 on one bus and the rest on another bus. And I'll only be on one bus, but I have a great guide and a good Bible scholar helping in the Bible lectures on the other bus. And so that's the way we've done it. So it's first come, first serve. Okay, thanks for the question. So like on May, did, did I send you a brochure on the May trip? Okay, I'll send by email a brochure of the May trip, and you can, you know, print off a few copies and let people look it over, and you can adjust it, you know. Yes? Do we have exact dates of departure uh, yes. and return dates? Uh, it, yes, in, it, yes I, I do have it scheduled. March the 13th through the 23rd, and then in uh, May it is... The, 20th through June the 5th. Uh huh. 20th of May through June the 5th. Uh -huh. We have to decide, right? Uh, you don't have to decide today, but you do have to make your own decision as a group, yes. Right. Yes. I'll, I'll give a, a note and add it. Oh, okay. Yeah, email has become so nice to get quick information out. Uh, so, does anybody not have email here? Anybody? You don't have. Okay, then you would check with the pastor or pastor's wife, and they would have email information. And, uh, okay, thanks. Any other questions? You know, it's been a real blessing to be here with you. I think there's a question back here, and one up here. Uh, and thank you for the invitation. And, brother, you were first back here. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's uh, the same time, 11 days, as the uh, one in March, and they count every day as a day. So it looks to us like 10, but it's 11. How many hours a day are you walking oh, okay. without sitting? Because maybe a guy should really get to walking. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you do want to do a lot of practice on walking. Uh, we have, uh, well, we'll leave at about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. We get you up at 5.30. Uh, we have breakfast at 6.30, or 6.15, I'm sorry, and then we leave at 7, and then in the wintertime, we have to come back by 4.30. In the summertime, March and May, we don't have to come back until 5, 5.30, but whenever the sun starts going down, they close all the sites, so we have to get back. Uh, at, at now, we do a lot of walking in Petra, unless you get that chariot, and that costs extra. Uh, we do a lot of walking in Jerusalem, but there are places where you can stop and sit down and rest. And sometimes if a person is tired, we say, okay, sit here and wait. We'll come back for you. And uh, so, you know, we try to accommodate a person's needs. Question? Not with Dr. Jim is a trick. Just trying to keep up with him. It's a trick. So you need it to my feet and then you need Oh, oh okay. When, whenever, the group, uh, whenever the group decides, uh, then... You need to start the deposits coming in because it's first come, first serve. And then the final payments, the deposit comes off of that, but the final payments are due 90 days ahead of the trip. Uh -huh. Deposit, I think, is $400 a, a person. Yeah. Right. Can I ask a yes. Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, yes. Uh, in fact, I have some people that have already had me uh, plan ahead for a December of 2015, January 2016, yes. So as long as the Lord uh, allows me, as long as I have health and opportunity, it's such a wonderful way to teach the Bible. And people come back revived, fired up to serve God, you know. And so uh, I, I, now the Lord gave that as a ministry to me. I, I intend to keep it up. Was there another question? Wow, you've been a, a great audience. I know I've gone on and on and on, uh, but, you know, I am a preacher. <laughs> <laughs>